What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech once again, and today I have a pretty in-depth performance review for Resident Evil 7. It's going to include about seven different graphics cards. It's also going to include a chart telling you which kind of settings you want to be looking at turning down or off to improve frame rate, and it's going to include a kind of new feature that we haven't seen before in some rendering options, so stick around. Alright, to get things started off, the test bench is going to be an i7-3770K overclocked to 4.4 GHz and that is made to an Asus P8Z77 motherboard board with 16 GB of DDR3 RAM and that's at 1600 MHz and it is all being powered by a Corsair AX860i and the operating system on a PNY 500GB solid state drive and you can check out the description for all of those details. The benchmark run is actually going to be pretty straightforward I'm going to link you over to Bitwit who actually has already done a performance review and you are going to be basically following the exact same benchmark he was doing. This gives me a good baseline to compare and contrast multiple different things and the idea here is essentially that you're going to start out from right when you start the game you're going to walk down out of the room to the left and then you're going to walk through the kitchen take another left hit the doorway turn around and walk back if you do this in the right kind of timing which is walking with no sprinting you're going to be looking at about a 60 second benchmark by the time you get back to the room you began in and walk through the door so before you guys go commenting and skipping to the kind of benchmarks that i have here and you go oh well bitwit said that this card got this much fps blah 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 i want you to pay attention pay close attention here there is a rendering option in the game and it's called interlaced and what this does essentially is it only processes about half of the pixels at a time and i will leave a kind of detailed description of what it does in the description below here but to give you an idea you're essentially gaining up to 50 percent gpu usage and at the same time you're gaining about 37 to 40 percent of your fps back from my testing so let's hop into that and i just wanted to make sure that you guys understand and i'm going to put this kind of chart up here to match bitwit's fps i had to i had matched all of his max settings but what i didn't realize is that i i guess he was using interlaced and it, it kind of sucks i tried to tweet at him message him i couldn't get any kind of response however I will say that I can be certain that it's the interlaced option as you can see here with interlaced turned on we bump up to an average FPS of 194 which is a lot closer to his numbers on his GTX 1070 and with it off we get a average of about 142 now all of my testing is going to be in native resolution and I just wanted to clarify that with you guys before we move on so speaking of settings, we copied all of Bitwit settings to the closest possible except for the interlaced. And another way that we can tell that he had to have been using the interlaced option is with this kind of percentage effect on frame rate that I put together. And I will also leave a link to the game debate which helped me kind of confirm these numbers as well. But if you look at this chart, the two big things that are going to pop out is going to be rendering method and ambient occlusion. The reason I want to point this out is because this is this is how I'm able to tell that Bitwit wasn't using any of the other options to gain an FPS bump, but he was actually using that rendering method because he does state that he used max settings on everything else. And the only thing that I can tell that might have had the same of effect on frame rate would be ambient occlusion setting, which he was very clear that he used SSAO. So the only other performance kind of bump that we can see FPS that matches up with this is going to be the rendering method which can get you or about that 37% gain. Of course resolution scaling is going to let you get a lot larger of gain. At the same time the game's just not going to look as good and you also have two other options that are, are kind of big hitters on FPS gains. If you guys are looking at improving your frame rate you're going to want to look at volumetric lighting and then two you're going to want to look at shadow quality. Now 
the downside to the rendering method being interlaced is actually going to be a little bit of visual fidelity. So I did go ahead and put together kind of a side by side here for you guys to take a look at. And this is going to be in 1080p and it is captured with shadow play uh, at a very high bit rate on a Titan X Pascal. But you are going to have some loss there and of course the loss once it gets compressed up to YouTube. But we're going to go ahead and still show you guys what it's supposed to look like or and you should be able to tell a difference. If not, you can let me know in the comment section below. I feel like there's definitely more of a grainy feel, which actually doesn't seem to hurt Resident Evil 7 as far as like the visual fidelity and overall feeling of the game is still translated even if you're running something like interlaced rendering. And this interlaced rendering to give you an idea, just the history on it, is actually being implemented into the PS4 Pro. And that's one of the kind of options that we're seeing that's bleeding over. We've also seen this on the Xbox One side where we had the Forza series, which has that dynamic resolution scaling kind of on demand. It kind of picks which objects it thinks aren't in focus of the camera and kind of downscales them resolution wise to gain FPS. And this was also done in Halo 5. So this is not the first time we've seen settings that are kind of just being implemented without the user's knowledge on consoles being a selectable option on the PC gaming side. So I think that's a net positive for PC gamers getting benefits from the console side of things. So now that we've gone through settings and etc, I do want to clarify that I'm only doing 1080p resolutions because we are testing a lot of cards. Obviously, you're going to be able to kind of tell whether or not you're going to be able to bump up to a higher resolution just from these numbers and they're all going to be at max settings and this is going to be in the normal rendering so interlaced is not on this means that the it's a full 1080p scene and it's not using any sort of cheats to gain any fps now the max settings does mean that we are going to have ssao and then we are also going to have the fxaa plus taa which was another option that I didn't see the FXAA plus only option that Bitwit said he used, but I will go ahead and clarify that I'm pretty sure he is using or means to say FXAA plus uh, TAA there. Either way, we do know just from the effect on performance that anti-aliasing doesn't have as much of an effect on frame rate in this title. So let's get to it guys. All my hard work is here and ugh, yeah, let's start off with the RX 464 gigabyte. I finally have one in for testing and it'll only be used for testing purposes. So I'm going to have one for you guys in every test now. I'm pretty excited about that. We're kind of getting everything rounded out, which is pretty awesome to have all of these cards to test games with. So the RX 464 gigabyte performed admirably with a kind of mid FPS of above 30 which is awesome. And then we had an average of about 53 with a max of 68 FPS. Moving on to the GTX 1050 Ti Dual. Of course, this is the ASUS trim of the card. We had a minimum FPS of 48 with an average of 60 and a max of 72. This is pretty awesome that at such a low price point, we are getting an average FPS of 60 and it did play very, very smooth. Even smoother, in fact, than the EVGA GTX 1060 3 gigabyte that there was no possible way for me to get any different I guess uh, any, <laughs> any different conclusions that I got here after testing multiple times because I knew that as soon as people saw this they would go oh my god and yes this is an oh my god situation here because the minimum FPS was 22 with an average of 65 and a max of 95 so obviously it's still technically with average frame rates and max frame rates able to beat the 1050 ti but if you look at that min frame rate with that huge drop to 22 fps and i'll actually have some footage here for you guys too we're getting a lot of choppy gameplay with a ton of hitching and really to get this game playable at max settings with 1080p on the three gigabyte 1060, you're gonna have to turn some shit down. Of course, interlaced can kind of take care of a lot of this, but not actually for this three gigabyte model. The things that you're gonna wanna turn down here is gonna be the ambient occlusion. The interlaced doesn't seem to help 
whatsoever just in this case which is kind of odd it does help overall but it doesn't help with the actual hitching portion that that gap uh, between the min and the max is still there even though that min gets bumped up with interlace to actually get rid of that hitching I had to turn off ambient occlusion and I had to turn kind of the textures down as well because it apparently requires a lot more uh, VRAM than the 1063 gigabyte is able to give us. And we can see this in even greater effect with the Sapphire RX 474 gigabyte that absolutely smashes the GTX 1063 gigabyte even at a cheaper cost to you, the consumer. So keep that in mind, that's pretty cool. And this card actually had a minimum of 81 FPS with an average of 103 and a max of 126. Right neck and neck with that is the EVGA GTX 1066 gigabyte, the super super clocked edition, which had a minimum of 84 with an average of about one FPS less than the 470 at 102 and a max of 124. Now, in my opinion, at this point, the 1060 and the 470 are performing exactly the same. But if it's actually trying to compete in the same price bracket as another a AMD, card it's going to come up against the MSI RX 488 gigabyte this is the gaming X trim which absolutely stomps the GTX 1066 gigabyte with a minimum FPS of 97 an average of 125 and a max of 158 now just to put everything into perspective for you guys and let you know why there are a lot of Nvidia people that are buying certain cards for certain purposes check out the GTX 1070 mini ITX version here which does beat out all the cards and offers an option to move up into maybe a higher 4k resolution and as we see here it's min fps was 109 with an average of 142 and a max of 184. so in conclusion i hope that you guys are able to kind of determine which card or where you place in here and what could be a potential upgrade for you if you do decide to upgrade before the actual release of the game and you can go ahead and run this benchmark yourself with your current card and then place yourself properly in there. Now, the, the things that I would suggest here is definitely avoid the GTX 1063 gigabyte as it's just, it's, I, I don't, I don't think that it's worth the price. I, I think that the rest of these cards have playable smooth frame rates in this game at 1080p with max settings and this card doesn't. And that's even if you include the cards that are significantly cheaper in the 1050 Ti and the RX 460. The other conclusion I would make here is that if you're going to be kind of duking it out in the 1440p arena, you're probably going to want to look at the RX 480. But of course, if you're going to want to do 4K, um, I think that the, the 1070 from what I have seen, and I did turn it up to 4K, it performs admirably at 4K. And I don't feel like the RX 480 is quite there yet for 4K. So you're probably going to have to go NVIDIA if you're wanting 4K right now. That's about all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And let me know what you guys think of the results here. And until next time, I will see you next Tuesday. Oh, and as a closing note, I did want to go ahead and give a shout out to Sir Lynn, which is my first patron over at patreon.com slash son of a tech. If you guys want to become a patron as well, definitely head over there. I post all of the benchmarks and graphs that you guys have seen in this video early on the patrons only feed over on the Patreon.